Hi guys, welcome to part 2 of this Photoshop tutorial. If you haven't seen part 1, I would suggest going back and watching that first. And uh, we're going to continue on with our edit. Um, as we said in part 1, we've done our edit, we've specifically picked a bad photo um, with a model that doesn't have good skin and there's a number of issues with the photo, there's lighting issues and one thing or another, so we're, we're, we're trying to edit through a, a bad photo rather than picking a photo that's damn near perfect in the first place because that doesn't really give you the opportunity to exercise these techniques very well if your photo is pretty close to perfect to start with. If you're a Beck member this image is downloadable from the website. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at is we do have these areas of poor lighting where there's light spilt over here. Um, ideally we could have done with the light a bit higher up and we recreated this triangular light at the top here but as it is it's coming at the bottom. We just create a shadow there and there's this weird lightness around the bottom of the nose and there's a darker patch here. So what I'm going to do is shift control O E, create a flattened layer at the top of the pile. We're going to get our clone stamp tool into lighting mode. And about 10%. I'm going to sample pixels from here. I'm just going to go across this edge to lessen that effect somewhat. And again down here. Now I'm going to switch the blending mode from lighten to darken. And darken down just a few of these pixels around the edges where they're uh, just a little bit prominent. So it's just to lessen that effect just slightly. I'm going to switch back to lighten. If we scroll back out and just click that on and off, you see we just evened out a few of the turns around there a little bit. Um, but we will do something else just to try and even those out a little bit more. We're going to make a level adjustment right at the top. And I'm going to push this mid tones right away up about here. I'm going to select in the layer mask, control I to invert it, scroll out a little bit, take a brush tool, foreground colour to white, make sure it's quite soft brush, click on your mask, and I'm going to paint that effect in over her face. And this is going to solve the bulk of our issues with the lighting because obviously the, the lower the lower the light, the more obvious these things sometimes are. So we need to get this that it's, it's kind of relatively in keeping. So we probably need to go over this left hand side as well. I'm not going to bother the arms because they were pretty bright anyway. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop that effect down to probably 65-ish. Let's have a look. Let's just turn that on and off. See how we're going. And see how the tones have been a lot more evened out now with uh, that increase in the mid-tones. I'm just going to tweak that a little bit again. And I'd say 58% is about right. So I want to go. I'm just going to turn these two layers off. I'm going to shift Control E to merge those top ones down. I'll rename that one Skin Tones. Now I'm going to make a new layer. Zoom up to the eyes. I'm going to set this new layer to multiply. Take a brush tool, foreground color to black. I'm going to shrink our brush all the way down. I'm just going to run over this black eyeliner. I'm 
and you try not to be too exact with it. Obviously you don't want to spill into areas of, of white within the eyes or anything like that. And the same on this side. Zoom back out a little bit. I'm going to change the opacity of this layer. I'm going to bring it down quite a ways. Probably around about 20% of a rough guess. So if I just flick that on and off. So now we've increased the contrast of the makeup. So what I'm going to also going to do is I'm just going to run over the eyebrows. Just press X to swap your colour if you uh, run a bit too far over. And the other thing I want to do is whilst I'm selecting art layer, I'm just going to, first of all I'm going to convert it to a smart object, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm not going to blur it by much, just probably 3 pixels, something like that, 2.8. The reason I've done that as a smart filter is because I can go back into this blur and change it if we need to. If I just turn that on and off, you can see the difference we're making with the makeup itself. If I turn the blur off, you can see it's just softened ever so slightly, so it looks a bit more natural. So I'm happy with that. So we've corrected some of the tones, um, got rid of some of the, the, the hot spots and the dark spots, uh, so it's a little bit more even, a little bit more pleasing to look at. We've darkened this eye makeup and the brown makeup. So I think the next thing we should probably look at is the lips. What I'm going to do is because we've finished with this, this eye layer, I'm now going to rasterize that. And we'll just call that eye makeup. I'm going to make a new layer. And on this layer, I'm going to pick a red. Change our blending mode to multiply first. And scroll back out because sometimes you can't really get the uh, effect until you uh, look at the whole picture. So now we've moved out, we can see that's way too strong. I'm not looking to create a, a look of lipstick, just a, a better natural looking colour. Because um, they do uh, lips do look quite washed out and lifeless. Um, I'm happy with that so I'm just going to accept that I think. Um, because we've got such a low opacity we don't need to be too careful about the edge detail because lips are naturally a little bit darker towards the edges anyway. Um, so the natural contrast range will probably help them blend in quite well um, but if you wanted to you could get a another layer here use the same color to go right around the very edges and create like a pencil line and have a slightly higher opacity so it will give a, a prominent edge to it but um, for the for purpose of this demonstration I think that's more than enough so the next thing we're going to look at <coughs> is to see if we can do anything else with these eyes now we did say before, because this model's got really dark brown eyes, um, they appear almost black. We we did do some uh, dodging and burning there to try and bring up this 
slight amber colour uh, around the iris. Uh, but we'll see if we can do anything more with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and put a selective colour layer at the top. Now I know from experience that this, this kind of colour, it can be difficult to try and make anything of it. But if we drop the cyan slider down, we take the yellow up, it will give us more of an amber colour. Now it's a bit too strong at the minute, but we'll soon sort that out. So we've got a mask there at the minute that's white, so we're going to control I to invert it. I'm going to take a white brush, make sure we're selected on the mask. I'm just going to paint that effect in. As I say, this effect is way, way too strong at the moment, but not a problem we will be changing it whilst it's up that high it's actually easier for you to see what you're doing whilst you're painting so you can tell where you've painted and where you haven't if you do struggle you can use the quick mask tool um, so that will create like a, a red mask as you're painting it um, which is a lot easier for you to keep track of scroll out a little bit and we're going to take the opacity quite a way down on that If I just switch that on enough, you see it hasn't added a lot, but it's added a bit more of a contrasting colour, so it's a little bit more obvious. So as we're always with our eyes, we'll look at it at a different zoom ratio, just to make sure that it doesn't look uh, too strange at any particular point. So if we're zoomed out, there isn't, you can't really see an awful lot of difference when it's that far out. When we zoomed in, when we zoomed in, it's um, a subtle difference, but it's a difference nevertheless. What I'm going to do is, while we've got these four selected, Shift Control. I need to collapse them down to one layer. part two. So if we just turn part two off you can see there's quite a substantial difference in the skin tones. The eye makeup uh, seems a lot more defined around the eyes and the eyebrows. Uh, the lips are a, a more natural colour. All the skin tones have evened out a lot better. Um, so there's a substantial difference. And if we go back to our original start image, you know, part one made quite a good change. Part 2 has lifted it really up to that next stage. Um, the only other thing you could do here if you wish to, if you control J to copy that top layer, I'm going to control T to transform that. If you have someone that's got quite a round face, you want to elongate it ever so slightly, um, rather than going for all the distortion and the warp tools, quite simply just drop that top layer in ever so slightly, except the changes. You can see how we've just narrowed the body and the face ever so slightly. But again, it's personal preference. Um, there's certainly nothing wrong with this lady's shape or, or size, so uh, it's not an issue. But if you want to do it for whatever reason, uh, it is an option for you. Now, if you are going to do another crop after this, I would be inclined to, if you're keeping a rectangular crop, uh, deal on those sort of lines. Uh, if you wanted to go for a square crop, um, I would probably go that kind of direction. Uh, but the easiest thing, if you're not sure, keep your picture in its original proportions, uh, make duplicate copies and crop it several different ways and then just live with it for a few days and see what you think. Because uh, there's nothing to say that you couldn't end up looking for a, almost like a pano crop across the middle. Um, 
you know, there's lots of different things you can do. Um, it's totally up to you how you crop it for your final image. There probably will be a part three to this tutorial, um, but it will not be utilising this image. I think we've gone as far as we can with this image. Um, the whole idea of this process was to take a pretty poor image and do the best we could with it. Um, what we'll probably do for part three, the techniques will be a little bit more advanced and a little bit more integrated in what we're doing, so we'll pick a better start image um, and we'll progress a little bit further with the digital makeup and things like that. Um, and we'll also look at the warp tools and distort tools for changing body shapes and things like that. Um, but I so say that will be in part three as and when I get time. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you followed along. Um, I hope you find it useful. Till the next time. Bye for now.